What's up, y'all? It's your boy Kareem again, looking kind of rough this morning. Uh, too lazy to shave today. Um, it's my day off, so I'm going to relax. Now, we're back at it again. About to meet JK um, at the gym here. And we're going to hit some legs. So, I uh, woke up this morning and I was 174.5, so I gained about a pound, you know, for my refeed day. Uh, I'm going to go in here and move some water around a little bit. Uh, hopefully I'll tighten up. And if I don't tighten up today, I should definitely tighten up tomorrow. Uh, my girlfriend Katie is going to join us today. So I'm going to try and get her to quit being so shy. And um, we're going to go in there and just try and have a great workout. So uh, just hang in there with us and thanks for following us on our journey. So what are you getting ready to do now, Kareem? Well, this is actually a fiber roller, and it is uh, battery operated, so it's really nice. The only thing you have to do is really sit on it, and uh, it's actually a form of myofascial release. So, a lot better than your regular foam roller. Check it out, folks. <clears throat> High tech stuff right here. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's vibrating. <laughs> so you just lay it right on the muscle where it's, where it's supposed to just and it does the work for you? Yes sir, pretty much. You can get these on Amazon for about 70 bucks. We decided to start legs off with hamstrings first. Uh, that's been our priority this off season is to bring up our hamstrings. Uh, if you don't know, that's the Joita priority principle, which emphasizes hitting your weaker muscle groups first when they're the freshest. There's Katie right there. She's doing a good job of keeping the dumbbells close to her thighs, and that way that'll keep the stress off your lower back. You also want to initiate this movement with your hips traveling back first. So JK does a good job of that as well. Um, very proud of him. He is actually trained his legs with enthusiasm this off season because he really wants to make a good showing at this competition coming up in July. So there he is right there getting some short reps there to keep the tension on the hamstrings. Next up was glute ham raises. Uh, they're such a great exercise. My hamstrings are always on fire after I do these. Now today we added some resistance with bands, which provides a nice constant resistance throughout the set. This was actually Katie's first time doing this exercise, so I had to coach her up on that. A lot of people let their torso crunch in and relax at the bottom. On the way up it causes you to use a lot of lower back, so I was trying to uh, limit her range of motion there. Then you have JK, if you remember JK from our first video, he was struggling on this exercise. But uh, now he's pretty much a pro and um, he's doing really well. I've toned it down with the supersets lately, so it's time to add in some intensity techniques. Especially, um, you know, with the limitations of the gym. So uh, here we did 10 reps on a leg extension followed by walking lunges and this will burn your quads up. I haven't been able to hit legs like I wanted due to a glute injury in this short off season but I'm finally healthy for this cut. I'm looking forward to adding walking lunges back into my normal routine and I think it's contributed to my teardrops and my glute development especially since I've been a quad squatter for most of my lifting career. By quad squatting, I mean failing to use hip drive to get your glutes involved in the squat and failing to keep your shins vertical. That'll fry you up. That'll fry your thighs up. <laughs> I gotta admit that boy JK's been stepping it up on the leg training. He's come a long way in a short amount of time. He seems to actually like training legs. You have to be one sick individual to like doing legs, but that's what you have to do in order to be successful in this game. Leg work just needs to be brutal. It doesn't always have to be heavy, but you can add various techniques to keep your workouts fresh and stimulating. How you like them apples? 
want nothing. Big props to Katie for stepping out of her comfort zone and training with us today. Katie's not looking to compete. She's actually a yoga instructor. She works out to bring stability to her hypermobile body. This free motion machine feels tremendous on the quads. I've always been a fan of this machine. The curved foot plate allows for you to push more through your heels and keep those shins vertical. That's a huge tip when performing any kind of squat. I also like the fact that you can change the pin and drop set, which can add some intensity to your workouts. We needed to hit glutes since we couldn't do traditional squats because of the New Year's rush. Everything was pretty much taken up. I didn't feel like doing glute bridges at this point, so we did the Matrix Glute Machine. This is possibly one of the best machines I've been on to train glutes. After that, we got some quick posing in. I like to take pics on refeed day and the day after to see what effects that that refeed had and also collect some data. Most times the refeed has the ability to correct my water balance and I end up drier the next day. I've been slacking on the water a little bit lately and as you know the more water you drink the more you expel the less water you drink the more you hold on to it. If I feel like I didn't restore enough glycogen I could possibly add more carbs the next time. When prepping for competition I like to practice holding poses for up to a minute in duration. 10 to 15 weeks of that and showtime will be a breeze. WNBF judges get a sick satisfaction having you pose for extended periods of time. Uh, you definitely get your money's worth, so you better bring your endurance when you're competing in the WNBF. Most people don't practice enough and it is so easy to correct your posing in this high-tech age of camera and video. Shame on you if you don't take advantage of that. You have to practice, practice, and practice some more until it becomes second nature. You can have a great physique and ruin your placings if you can't pose. Unless you're a Doug Miller type who can just walk out and be awe inspiring without even posing. JK's got a big old rib cage that allows him to do a vacuum pretty easily. With a little bit more practice that can be a good pose for him. The most challenging thing for him in this prep will probably be the posing. He has picked up on things pretty quickly but I have to get him used to expanding his chest and actually keeping it up in his poses and posing bigger. That is something that I struggle with myself if I don't practice enough. Uh, that and not depressing my traps, which takes away from your lat width and also your upper back definition. Kareem's tip number one, make sure that you take short breaths. You will get fatigued rather quickly by holding your breath on stage. It's just gonna cause you to shake. Posing, demeanor, confidence. It all matters when it comes to stage presence. Posing can be hard, but you need to look like you're not exhausted and straining. A smart man by the name of Matt Jansen once told me to pose at 80 to 85 percent. That extra 20 to 15 isn't going to bring out any more muscle, so why strain? As you can see, JK's back is a strong point for him. I can't wait to see how it looks with an even longer off-season and more consistent bodybuilding training. Work out myself. What about that posing? Uh, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Winded now. So. Yeah, just have a bad Still habit. Still learning. <laughs> holding our breath, but I do it too. Yeah. Gotta breathe. Had to work on that. All right. Yeah. Well, it was a good workout, right? Yes, sir. All right. Come see us again next week. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.